In this video, I'm going to show you how to style your table borders using CSS, and we're getting started right now. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from Higher Learning Lab, where we help you get better at coding so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, or for your business. If it's your first time here, make sure you click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell notification icon so you're notified when we publish more awesome tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, let's get into the screen capture of this tutorial. I'll see you there. Now this probably seems pretty easy. It should be fairly easy to do, right? But it turns out with CSS, it's actually a little tricky to apply borders to tables. And I'm going to show you all the ins and outs right now as we go through the process of applying a green one pixel wide border to my table right here, which currently is totally unstyled. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the old HTML borders. So if we type in or we click into the table tag, we use the border parameter, choose the number one as the border type we see our border right here. And notice these gaps between the cells. This is cell spacing, which is another HTML parameter that we're gonna work with in a minute because this is gonna mess up our borders when we use CSS. So let's delete this border from here because it's really ugly. Let's go open our style block up here, type in table and open and close curly brackets and put in a border of one pixel solid green refresh this page and then oh man that all it does is put an outline around the table it doesn't actually make the borders that i want so that's a common mistake beginners think they, th they think oh select the table apply border it should magically work how i want it to unfortunately it doesn't what you have to do is instead of using a table selector use the td selector to select the table cells and put a border around the individual cells. And just like the example we saw earlier with the HTML, it has the spaces between the cells, which is probably not what you want. If that is what you want, great, you're done. If that's not what you want, keep on watching. So what we need to do is apply a border, or sorry, first what we need to do is kill that cell spacing. So we click into our table tag, we type in cell spacing, all one word equals open and close quotes and the number is zero. We refresh this page and we see the cell spacing is gone, but where you have cells that have adjacent borders, you have a two pixel width in the border, which is not what you want. You want, or maybe not, that's not what I would want. So what I would want is have everything being one pixel like we see on the outside and not have this doubled up area in the middle. So that's, that's just a mess. So what we need to do is some very tricky stuff we need to think through exactly um, where we want our borders to go. What we have to do is selectively apply borders to three out of the four sides in the rows. So we're going to apply a border to the right side of this one, but not the left side of this one. We're going to apply a border to the right side of this one, but not the left side of this one. And we're going to end up having no border at first on the very far right side. And then we're going to apply that border back in later. So what we have to do is change our border um, just change it to border right none. So that takes out all the borders on the right hand side of a cell which is totally fine for the interior ones but on the very last one there's no border. Now that's not what you want but we're going to fix that in a minute. But we still have the problem of having the double space or the double line in between the cells vertically. And depending on how many rows you have, you're going to have that for all of your rows. So we also want to apply border bottom none. And that takes out the border in between, but we lose the border at the very bottom. Again, not what we want, but we're going to fix that right now. So to make this work, what we have to do is use the nth last child pseudo selector. So we're going to make a new selector called td colon nth last child open and close regular brackets and then open and close curly brackets. Inside these regular brackets we're going to put the number one which is going to select the very last um, iteration of the child. So the nth child basically when you have a certain list of elements in a row it can be bullet points 
It can be table cells and rows when you have the same element in, uh, one after the other, or the same type of element one after the other, right side by side. This will select dynamically the last one, or if you put a two in here, the second to the last one, third to the last one, fourth to the last one. So what you can end up doing, this is kind of off topic, but something really cool you can do with this is if you want to have your table, you want to have alternate rows highlighted, you can use the nth last child selector, or the nth child selector in that case, to highlight every second row. And it will do that for whatever size the table is. So you don't have to go back in and, and select each table at a class to each row where you want the, the different background. You can actually use the pseudo selector to apply it dynamically, which is fantastic. But that's not the topic of this video. What we're trying to do is add our borders to the bottom back and the border on the right back. So we're gonna do that right now with nth child last. So this is always gonna select the very last TD in the sequence. So in this case, the last TD is right here. And we are going to use border right one pixel solid green which is exactly what we have up here, but this one applied to everything. And this one only applies to the very last one. So if we refresh the page, we have our border right added back in. And now all we have to do is add the border back to the bottom of the table. And you might think, oh, well, I'll just do the same thing. I'm just gonna add, or the same idea, to the last TD, which, you know, that should be the last TD right there. That's, this is the last TD over here horizontally. This is the last TD vertically. So I'm gonna add border bottom to the last TD. One pixel solid green. And then we save this, refresh this page, and then, oh, I did add to the last TD, but that's not quite what I wanted. So, oh, I know. What I'll do is add it to the nth child TR but it turns out that doesn't work either I'm going to show you right now we want to add a border bottom of that to all the last TRs and just nothing happens it's blank what you actually have to do is select the table and for this bottom border of the table, you actually apply it right to the table, just the border bottom on the table. And then we have our table all closed off, done and fancy, good to go. So what seems like it should be quite easy to do actually takes this much CSS, which isn't much. But if you didn't know the process of doing this, there'd be a lot of trial and error and a lot of frustration and I'm actually going to copy and paste this code below the video so you can just copy it right from there if you want to use this and, then, and adapt it, save yourself some time. And this will apply to no matter what size your table is, this will work, this code right here. And that's how easy it is to add some styles to your table borders using CSS. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click on the subscribe button, then click on the bell notification icon so you're notified when we publish more awesome content. And then click on that card that just appeared in the top right of this video for some awesome resources. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.